Good to see all of you here. We're going to sing Trust and Obey, and I told Fred I was going to do all four verses, but I changed my mind. First, second, and last verses. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. Let us do His good will. He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Last verse, then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Brother Keith, come right ahead. Thank you. It's good to see everyone tonight. And if you're watching our service on uh, uh, live stream, uh, we're glad you join in with us. And thank you for those that are here in person. Good to see you folks. Amen. And uh, uh, we've missed you. And... Uh, Glad the Lord brought you back to us uh, tonight. Uh, in a uh, all right. Uh, at this time, if we could take a look at our announcements and our prayer list uh, for our announcements uh, this Saturday morning at eight thirty a.m. will be our monthly uh, prayer breakfast uh, in the family center, and then. This upcoming Sunday, um, no Sunday school was scheduled uh, because of a deacon ordination service, and our 11 o'clock service has been moved up to 10 o'clock. Uh, so uh, please be here at 10 a.m. We'll start the morning worship service and the deacon's ordination. And uh, before I went into ministry on deacon ordinations and minister ordinations a lot of times they would have it on Sunday afternoons and but the attendance was ones I attended was very poor and I think that is a discouragement to the new uh, men to be ordained so that's why we're uh, combining it with our service Sunday morning so uh, if there are those that are here tonight that you see other church members during the week, please uh, help us to get the word out at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. And uh, Monday evening will be Faith Riders of next week in the Family Center at 7 p.m. Uh, Joy Makers Tuesday, is that still on? Okay, Joy Makers at 11.30 a.m. on Tuesday of next week. And then a week from this Saturday, 
at 11.30 a.m. Senior Adults Valentine Luncheon in the Family Center. And I understand that the senior adults, all you need to do is just bring yourselves here. You don't bring anything, you just bring yourself here. Senior adults have been working in the kitchen. Uh, your kitchen is off limits for you on that day. And because uh, uh, the younger folks in the church want to serve you. All right? And then a couple weeks away, uh, well, on the 19th, uh, in the morning service will be our Lord's Supper and then in communion. And then uh, that evening at 6 or uh, 5.30 p.m. will be our monthly business meeting. Any other uh, announcements? All right, for our prayer list, um, if you would please uh, remember the Bobby Bitten family, uh, those of you that's been here uh, for many years, this would be uh, Ruth and Ed's uh, son. Uh, he passed away a couple of days ago, and uh, I do not know when that graveside service is, but it is private, and no date or time has been put out, but please pray for the family. Uh, also, if you'll continue to remember uh, Lynn Brown and uh, um, Brother Tim and their family, um, also, Miss Maldi Hutto, you got a test coming up pretty soon, right? Yeah. February? Next week. Next week? All right. Praying for you. Uh, Joan has surgery next Tuesday morning uh, at Memorial, if you'll remember her. Um, Gail and Butch Cook should be traveling home tomorrow, be in prayer for their travels, and I think uh, Gail may have a doctor's appointment uh, on Friday. Uh, also, please continue to remember uh, Aaron uh, Stroll, uh, Catherine Siler, Donna Hooks will be having surgery on Wednesday of next week at Erlanger. Miss Charlotte uh, McGuffey came home today. Uh, that is a praise. Uh, her test, her cardiac uh, test was successful. And so please continue to remember her in prayer. Uh, Alex Wofford got moved to NHC Fort Oglethorpe. You'll see on the prayer list, I didn't have a room number. Uh, that's because uh, they did not get him situated until later this afternoon. But he's at NHC Fort Oglethorpe, room 608. And if you'll also remember Miss Paula in prayer as well. And they're in the process of moving Charles Russell to NHC Roswell, so I don't have that room number yet. Uh, so if you'll remember uh, him. And also um, uh, a pastor friend or acquaintance of mine uh, down in South Georgia. Uh, in fact, he preached a revival at my last church. Uh, he's about three years, uh, four years younger than I am. And he passed away. Uh, Monday, he preached uh, last Wednesday night, uh, took him to the hospital early um, Sunday morning, uh, they put him on life support, and uh, then um, the next uh, Monday of this week, he passed, and they're going to have his service, uh, uh, I believe it's Monday of next week, so if you'll please remember uh, Reverend uh, Darnell Barner family. In prayer. All right, are there others? Hey, Stacy, it's good to see you in the back. Uh oh. Her name's Jean, right? Atchison, right? Uh, I know she's on the email prayer list. I'm just All right, are there others? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, how do you spell uh, Trace's last name? And what about the other name?
And we just removed uh, one of your family members just last week, right? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, please remember those that are still dealing with COVID, all right? Anyone else? Unspoken, if you'll raise your hand. Uh, God sees those hands, and let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we're so thankful that, uh, first of all, that we can call you our Father, and Lord, we know that uh, just as our earthly father did, uh, Lord, that you love us unconditionally. Father, thank you that uh, there's not a thing that goes on in our lives that you're not aware of. God, I pray that you'll be with those that are uh, sick. Lord, I pray that you'll touch their bodies. Uh, Father, those that may be in the hospitals or the nursing homes or the assisted living, God, I pray that you'll be with the uh, medical staff as they take care of the patients. Lord, be with those that are sick at home. Uh, Lord, I pray also that you'll be with the caregivers. God, those that uh, will be going through surgery this next week, we uplift them up to you, Lord, and just pray that you would just meet their needs. Uh, Father, I pray that uh, uh, their healing would uh, uh, be swiftly, and God, that uh, uh, you would just be with the family members as they uh, wait on their loved ones. Uh, Father, I thank you for um, uh, the love that is in this church, the unity that is here. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'll continue to bless us as a church. And Father, as we uh, continue to prepare for the deacon ordination service this upcoming Sunday, Lord, I pray that you'll be with uh, the singing, you'll be with the uh, the words that are spoken, and Lord, I pray that uh, you'll be with each um, uh, yoke fella as they will be ordained, and God, I pray that you would just use them as you see fit in our church to help us to be able to reach others. Lord, forgive us where we failed you, and Lord, I ask you personally if there's any unconfessed sin in my life that you would cleanse me this moment. Uh, so as I open up your word, Father, that you would speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, we are finishing up uh, Acts chapter 13 tonight. And uh, so if you have your Bibles, uh, if you'll please turn to Acts chapter 13, uh, verses 42. And I know I, I told Fred uh, 49 but we're going to go ahead and go through 52, uh, so next week we can uh, uh, start chapter 14. So if you'll please stand in honor to God's word. The words will be on the uh, uh, overhead in case you do not uh, have your Bibles with you. Sort of a strange subject. Anytime a pastor says it's time to move forward, Sometimes there could be opposition and there could be uh, people who is not willing to change. But I think you'll see as we look into this scripture why we came up with it's time to move forward. Uh, so in Acts chapter 13, beginning in verse 42, and I'll just, just briefly tell you what has taken place. And if you've been here on Wednesday night, you already know. But Acts 13 is the first recorded sermon in Scripture that Paul preached. And when he preached it, he not only was it his first sermon, but it was probably the longest sermon or one of the longest sermons. It was in two parts. The first part was he was telling the Jews and the Gentiles uh, or those that was present about the history of the Old Testament, how God had taken um, Israel uh, out of bondage in Egypt. And then on the second part of the uh, uh, sermon, he brought up about basically how they crucified Jesus and, uh, and they were the ones guilty of having him uh, crucified. And then, uh, uh, but they were faithful, Paul was faithful, 
to the preaching of his word. And so now we come to verse 42, and there comes a time of, in Paul's life that there's opposition. Verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. In other words, they were getting a little impatient. They were ready to hear the word. Verse 43, Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, but since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, Behold, we turn to the Gentiles. Verse 47, For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city, raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and expelled them from their region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. May the Lord add his blessings on this reading of his word. You may be seated. It is amazing how God honors the preaching of the gospel. When the gospel is preached with power and conviction, the results can be divided. For example, when a faithful minister is preaching the gospel, and by the way, uh, if there's something you say that, well, pastor, is there something I can pray for you about? Uh, I want to say the number one priority in my life that you can pray for me if you care enough to pray for me is this that I will always have boldness to preach the word of God and not to compromise the word of God. Barnabas and Paul, they were faithful in what God had called them to do, and they preached the gospel. Now, when we preach the gospel, um, a few things may happen. Number one, there's going to be some who, who are going to reject the gospel, like the Jews did. There's going to be some that uh, will believe the gospel and come under conviction and make a decision for Christ. And then there's a third group of people that may oppose what the minister is saying. And by the way, a lot of things in Scripture is not pretty, but to me, if, if over, way over 2,000 years ago, if Jesus called it sin, it's still sin today. And so the gospel first confronts sinners with the law and judgment, but then the grace of God in Christ comes into play. What it does, the gospel exposes the helpless sinners that they are, and stripes them of their self-righteousness. Jesus Christ was a preacher that oftentimes brought division. 
Now, prior to this passage, back in the earlier part of Acts, we studied about the sermon that Peter preached, and we also uh, uh, discussed about the sermon that Stephen. Uh, Stephen was a deacon, uh, but he also did preaching. Well, Peter's sermon led to hostility that led to the persecution of the apostles. And then Stephen's sermon led to hostility that ultimately led to his stoning. So it can cause a major difference between those who receive it and those who reject it. So tonight I'd like for us for a few moments to visit with Paul and Barnabas as they're in Antioch. We see that um, in this case the gospel that uh, Paul was preaching uh, was divisive. So the first thing I want you to look at is the outcome of the gospel sermon in verse 42. Verse 42, it mentioned that the Gentiles had begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Apparently, the Gentiles were the ones who were under uh, conviction, and when they begged, uh, another word for beg is, is uh, scripturally is favorable or intense interest, and Paul, because Paul to arouse the Gentiles' interest in the message. In that same verse, in verse 42, that as they begged that these words be, that they might be preached, Paul had just delivered a sermon that moved from the exclusiveness of the gospel to the inclusiveness, which was a call for repetition. Now, I know that uh, the Gentiles did not have the Baptist hymnal on that day. I do know that the Baptist was not uh, organized back then. But if it had been, I think that maybe the Gentiles might have left singing, Whosoever surely meaneth me. Remember that song we used to sing? Uh, in the church. So the message to them was convincing in its history, it was convincing in its prophecy, and it was comforting in its offer. So the Gentiles and the Jews had just been told they could come to God not, not by a religious system, but through a righteous person, and that righteous person would be the Messiah, which would be our Savior. Also, the Jews got upset that the Gentiles were begging for the gospel. Why wasn't the Jews, Jewish people, why weren't they begging for the gospel? See, what was happening was the Jewish people were jealous a group that was called Gentiles that were receiving the gospel, and and what really got them upset. I don't know how, but the scripture tells us that that the Gentiles they went out in what they were going to get when they came back on the Sabbath day. And by the way. Um, when you come to church, uh, there's some things you need to do before you come to church. Just like tonight. I don't want you to raise up your hand. Some of you came to choir practice early. Some of you came enough time to say hello to your brothers and sisters in Christ. But there's one thing that I, I would like to say I expect. But, but you're going to do what you want to do. I, I, you know, I can't, I can't make you do certain things. But if you want to get the most out of corporate worship and the most out of being under the um, 
the word as it has been taught in Sunday school on Sundays. What you need to do is when you first get up on Sunday morning, have a little talk with Satan. Say, Satan, you have no authority of me. You're not going to disrupt what I do today. That I'm, I'm going, in a few minutes, I'm going to go worship God. So in Jesus' name, I'm going to bound you and where you have no authority on what happens in the church house. And then the second, the second step, I'm not giving you all a lot of things to do, just two things. Second thing, you need to pray. Pray before you come to church. Well, preacher, we're not supposed to pray until we get to church. Wrong answer. That might be why some of you are not getting anything out of church. See, what Jewish people were doing, they were depending on a religious system going through all the rituals that they would be doing something good for God. But I'm going to tell you what, when a person... Uh, uh, when the Holy Spirit speaks to that heart and that heart gets uh, convicted, you need to understand that that conviction sometimes will be so strong you won't be able to sit there uh, to ask God for So there was a great positive influence of the Gentiles. Some of them couldn't wait till next week. How many of you can't wait until Sunday? I don't want to see the hands. <laughs> I have two hands. Why can't you not wait until next Sunday? Well, preacher, I got too much things to do. Well, so do I. You know, I was talking to my my oldest brother on the phone. Uh, yesterday, he, he's probably watching the service, and by the way, if you are, you need to be going to Purdue on Wednesday night. But yesterday, he called me, and he says, uh, he says, what are you doing? And I said, uh, I'm working on Bible study for tomorrow night. And he said, tomorrow night? When did y'all move uh, prayer meeting to Thursday night? I said, this is, talking yesterday, I said, this is not Wednesday, this is Tuesday. And I said, and by the way, don't rush Wednesday. Wednesday comes around real fast to me. Uh, unless you've been a pastor like Brother Jimmy. I mean, I mean, listen, by the time I come out of a pulpit on Wednesday night, I know I got Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I know that's three long days, 24 hours a day. But I'm going to tell you, it's almost like it's just a few hours, and it's time to prepare again for Sunday. But the point is this. Whether I am preaching or somebody else is preaching here, I am looking forward to what God has in store for the upcoming service. In other words, if we're coming to church and we're not expecting God to do some things, it might be best that we just stay at home. I don't want you to stay at home. But by the way, if we don't come expecting God to move, there's probably a good chance that he will not move in our service. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So this was, the Gentiles could look at this, of this being the day of their salvation. Many of the Jews and Gentiles that followed Paul and Barnabas believed, by responding to the gospel. <coughs> now, some of the Jewish people did respond, but some of the chief leaders, they were the ones that was causing the problems in uh, uh, Antioch. But Paul's challenge was this. He persuaded them, to con the Gentiles, to continue in the grace of God. By the way, perseverance is a mark of saving faith. And then in verse 44, uh, again, it says, On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. I don't know how large at that time Antioch was, but just think about it. 
That must have been the majority of the, the town. They must have been hungry. They must, word must have got out that the preacher preached a, <laughs> a long message. And you would think that would keep them from not coming, you know, to church. Think about it. Would you be shocked if this auditorium was full, I mean, jam-packed next Sunday? Would you be shocked? Can God do it? How is he going to do it? How is he going to do it? What are we going to have to do? Do the same, same thing as the Gentiles did. Go out into the streets, invite them, and compel them to come in. And the word of God says, my house may be filled. I'm going to tell you, Satan is having a heyday with churches today. We, we, we can blame a lot of it on, uh, you know, the recent COVID and all that. We can, we can make excuses why our churches are not full. But I, I believe one of the reasons is we're not excited about telling somebody else about the Lord and inviting them. Like I always say, if you don't feel comfortable sharing your faith with them, at least just invite them to come. And then let's look a little bit at the opposition of the uh, gospel message in verse 45. In verse 45, but when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and con contradicting and blaspheming, they opposed the things spoken by Paul. So Paul, because of him being bold and not, not backing up, uh, this is when the opposition came, and the scripture in 45 uses the word envy. Uh, they were, they were ba basically uh, jealous. What was they jealous over? Uh, I just wrote down about three things. Number one, they were probably uh, showing envy because the synagogue, the synagogue was filled with Gentiles and they had never seen such crowds. Or number two, it was a different message than they normally heard. I think I, I shared this a few years ago, but way before I came to pastor this church uh, when we were in South Georgia, um, of course we, I love Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg and, and you know, I know some of you, you do too. If I could get away a day or two, that's, that's where I like to go to rest and just wind down and all this. But I remember when I was pastoring down in Savannah, Georgia, uh, the pastor then of, if you know anything about the historic part of Savannah, the pastor, the senior pastor at that time um, uh, of Bull Street Baptist, right in the middle of the circle of the historic part of downtown uh, Savannah. Uh, we went on vacation the same week. Pastor two different churches, went on vacation the same week, we did not know that each other was going to go on vacation the same week. We did not know we were going to be going to the same location. Now, from Savannah, Georgia to Gatlinburg was a long ways, you know. And so uh, on Sunday we, or Saturday, we drove around trying to find a, a church that we could go to and visit on Sunday. So we go to church, and, and, uh, and I said, you know, um, and I'm not going to name the church, but it was one of the bigger churches in Gatlinburg. And uh, so we went, and uh, I thought I took a shower that morning. I thought I brushed my teeth. I thought my hair was combed. I thought I was pretty clean. And that church was almost full. And during the welcome, not the first person said one word to us. 
then the pastor comes up, and it was a Southern Baptist church. He comes up in his black robe, and he didn't even use the name Jesus or God in his message. And so when the amens were said, we were going out the front door, and my pastor friend, way on the other side of the church, he says, Hey, Keith! Hey, Ernie, how are you? So the point I'm trying to make is your church can be full but, and your focus can be on the wrong thing. Well, the focus of the minister is to stay in the Word. By the way, I've said this over and over, and I don't know what everybody's going through tonight. We're, I'm sure we're all going through something different. But I do know this. The answer to every situation that you will ever face, the answer is right here. And when you're going through difficult times, you need to hold the Bible closer to you. And when there's nothing else that interests you in reading, open up the Word of God. And start reading. You might say, well, preacher, where do I start reading at? Well, why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to direct you to where he wants you to be? And if you still don't have any leading, go to Psalms. Different writers in Psalms, 150 Psalms. Some of them were written by David. David's life was a roller coaster. It was just, it was like mine, just like this. But guess what? He knew who his God was. He knew who was going to solve all the problems he went through, and he's also the same God that brought, brought peace in his life. So if you have nowhere else to start, start in the book of Psalms. Uh, every day, some days I come short, but I try my goal every day is to read, and a lot of times, I, I was over here most of the day reading things that was not in our text tonight, but it's so I could get, be fed the Word of God so I could then try to my best to feed you the Word of God. But each day, I try to spend a good 45 minutes along with God. And during that 45 minutes, sometimes even an hour, Sometimes I'll, I'll say, John, I'm tied up for a while, uh, and most of the time I'm, I'm on Scripture. But I do my best to read five chapters in Psalms and five chapters in Proverbs. And you might say, why Psalms and Proverbs and not the rest of the, the Bible? It's because Psalms is what brings peace and joy to my heart when I'm down. It lifts me up. And Proverbs... That's where I receive God's wisdom. There's a difference between God's wisdom and the world's wisdom. So Jews were opposed, and they were also opposed, I think, that because of Paul's teaching that in the Messiah that God accepted the Gentiles on an equal basis as Jews. And then, then uh, also uh, verse 44 and 45 uses the word blaspheming. But uh, the Jews rejected it. And then I want us to go down uh, and actually in uh, verse uh, 47 is basically a passage uh, uh, that is quoted uh, from Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6 where it says, For so the Lord has commanded, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. See, the gospel was presented to the Jewish people. They rejected it. God knew that they were going to reject, reject it. But they rejected it. So when the Jews rejected 
the Messiah, this is what opened up the door of evangelism to the Gentile nations. We are Gentiles. And we need to understand that a lot of the Jewish people still do not believe the Messiah has been born, but salvation for the Gentiles was provided for us. And look in verse 48. It says, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been uh, appointed uh, to eternal life, they believed. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. And then verses 50 through 52. The opposition got so bad that they ran Barnabas and Paul out of town. Well, so far, I haven't been uh, run out of town yet. That day, that day may come. But one of the reasons I say about it's time to move forward is sometimes I get, I get discouraged when I, um, in other words, I go down a church roll every so often and people I hadn't seen in years, I call them or I, I'll send a note to them or I get word to them or I'll see them out somewhere and I'll say, you know, I haven't seen you in a while. I'd like to see you back at church. And then I'd ask them, I said, have you united with another church or anything? No, I, I'm just not going to church. I know I need to go to church, but I'm not going to go to church. But, you know, we spend a lot of time, don't get me wrong, in reach is important because we don't know what people are going through. In reach is important. But the reason I think that sometimes it comes a time that we need to move forward, we need to put the emphasis also on outreach. See, the Jewish people rejected. Salvation was open to the Gentiles. But, but even though all this opposition came, I'm going to close with this, verse 51 and 52. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them, and then they came to Iconium. Now, do you think they did right by shaking off the dust? Didn't Jesus say that on one occasion? I mean, we try every way to try to get people to come to the Lord. But, but Barnabas and Paul, it says they shook off the dust from their feet against them. And then, verse 52, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And as Christians we should be filled with joy and the Holy Spirit because of what Jesus means to all of us. Any questions tonight? Are you ready to go home? Oh, yes, ma'am. You put me on hold. I want to ask you, I want to ask you a personal question. Um, when you're trying to get a hold of somebody, say a business, and you're not. I know I'm a real person, but you're not talking to a real person. You're talking to an automated. Uh, voicemail or greeting or somebody comes on and says I'm going to have to put you on hold and they leave you on hold how does that make you feel oh you didn't leave <laughs> I, I just wanted to hear okay I just want to hear the whole story all right See, this is what we missed you not being here. You, you keep us 
bubbling over. All right. Uh, thank you for everyone being here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and by the way, before we go home, this lady right here in the middle, when I would hear from her about inputs from the message, she would tell me that I did not preach long enough. All right? So uh, it's because... All right, let's stand and go home and... Uh, and if any, I'll be at the front door, and if anyone needs to speak to me about anything, feel free to do that. Uh, please, uh, once again, continue to remember uh, Charles Russell uh, through that transition, and he'll be making the NHC uh, Rossville, uh, and also Alex and uh, Miss Paula Swafford. She has a lot on her, and uh, I'll be uh, checking on them in the morning. Uh, and then let's just... Uh, pray for one another. And I do this ever so often. Uh, but just look to the person that's to your right. Or if there's not one to the right, look to the left. All right? Or look at the one in, standing in back of you or in front of you. Do you know who they are or that person is by name? And if you do, if you do, before you put your head on your pillow tonight, would you offer up a prayer on behalf of that person? Not that they've had a terrible day, but if we do this, all of us in this room will be prayed for. And let's just continue to love one another, pray for one another, and we look forward uh, for Sunday. Brother Jimmy, you feel like dismissing us first? All right, thank you. Taking up a special offering for the uh, pastor to get a